to advanced cosplay techniques. <laughs> Say goodbye to your time and money. Um, so, we cover a bunch of uh, different topics. Um, uh, these are some of the costumes I've done. So, we're going to be covering stuff like you know, making foam armor, making different kinds of foam armor, um, sculpting and casting, um, uh, working with like plastics, all kinds of different crazy stuff. Um, but here are some of the costumes that I've made. I did not make this one. Um, this was made, this is the one that I wear for Firefall at events. But it looked cool, so I put it in there. Um, and by the way, at the end of the panel, like once we're done presenting, um, I have some time set aside for you guys to ask me questions. Like if there's anything you guys are struggling with for like your own costume projects, um, I can like brainstorm with you guys. And everyone can hear me okay? Okay, so first off, um, I'm going to start talking about foam. Um, it's foam. Awkward story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's foam. Cool. Okay, so when you're working with foam, um, uh, there's two types, two main types of foam. There's EVA foam, and then there's L200, L300. EVA foam is like the, the foam formats that you can get um, at like Lowe's. Home Depot, whereas uh, L200, L300 is a uh, lighter density foam, and I'll, I'll talk about the differences a little bit more. But when you're making armor or even tops, the advantages for uh, making them out of foam instead of, for example, like casting, is that it's uh, very light, it's very easy to use, it's relatively very cheap, um, and it, you can shape it like you do a heat gun, um, and like. If you don't have a lot of money, this is foam armor is probably the way to go because you know if you mess up, you can just remake the piece and it's not that devastating for your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about Eva foam first. Um, if you guys have any like, uh, I'm not from Canada. You guys have Home Depot and Lowe's up here though, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so if you go there, they have like foam flooring mats. Just ask ask for like the office or like kids playroom mats. Um, they usually come in either like rainbow packs, which not usually like what you want. They also come in gray. Um, uh, they come in half inch thickness, but you can shape them down if you want to. Um, you can actually also get small sheets of quarter inch thickness Eva foam, um, but they call it craft foam, but it's actually Eva foam at like Michaels or places like that. So you can get different thicknesses. Um, it's really dense um, and heavy and durable as compared to like L200 or L300. Um, and you can cut it with a razor, block, uh, razor, razor blade or scroll saw, so it's a little bit harder to cut. Um, and you can also dremel it for um, like beveled edges and detailing. And when you get like the, the actual package of foam, um, one side is going to be smooth but not rubber coated. And the other side is going to be textured with kind of like a industrial like, like metal like grid sort of texture, I don't know how to explain it. Um, and that one's rubber coated, um, and that's so that's already treated. So if you just want to paint that side, you can. But if you use the flat side, which is the side that I like to use, um, you have to actually like coat that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, Eva foam is really good if uh, you're working on armor that has like a lot of like fine details, like um, like beveled edges in it, um, because you can actually go through and, and sand it and dremel it down. And it won't fray. It'll actually get a really nice finish to it. Um, and it's good if um, you're wearing something that you think is going to get beat up a lot because you don't have to worry about, you know, knocking it against like a corner or something and having like a big dent in it because it is so dense. Uh, but it, it is heavier, so um, if you get exhausted easily, uh, it may not be a good choice for a full suit of armor, um, but maybe for like a smaller like piece. Um, but it, it's really a uh, really good stuff to use, in my opinion. Um, I also have a friend who makes a lot of weapons just out of Eva foam, and they look amazing if you finish it properly. So here's a costume that I made out of uh, Eva foam. Um, this is actually your thing, but the rest of this is all uh, Eva foam. Um, this is like different uh, thicknesses. Uh, so like Commander Pepper armor. Um, so this is an example of what you can do with it. And then there's uh, L200 foam. You can also get L300, which is a little bit more dense. But um, L200 seems to be the standard. Um, it's a lot lighter um, because it's less dense, um, but it's also very susceptible to getting damaged. So if you like accidentally stick your finger into it, like you might get like a mark from like the your fingernail. 
Um, so if it's something that you think is going to get like bumped a lot, for example, if it's on your like your shins or your knees or something, uh, you just have to be very careful with it. Um, but the advantage is, is because it is so light, it's really easy to wear. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything at all. Um, and and uh, it, it's a good choice also if you want something to be kind of suspended and not have like, a lot of points where it's actually packed down to your suit or if it's not like, you know, uh, if it doesn't go all the way around in like a structurally uh, sound way. Um, and this is actually really easy to use because you can just cut it with scissors. Um, you can also use a razor blade if you feel more comfortable with that, but I like the precision you can get the scissors. Um, however, you can't dremel this, you can't sand it. Um, if you try, like, it will start, like, fuzzing up. Um, L300, you might be able to do it, um, but L200, it's just not dense enough. And so it just, it gets, like, really messed up. Um, however, it is uh, really flexible and easy to work with um, because it's also not very dense. So, um, for example, with Eofoam, it's pretty stiff, so, like, unless you heat it up, it's going to be hard to, like, bend it at all. Whereas with L200, you can bend it a lot. And if you put L200, for example, on an area with a joint, um, like let's say your hip or uh, your knee or something, and it, it flexes and bends a lot, you're not going to have a lot of trouble with that because it will move with you as opposed to Eva foam, which it, it's pretty rigid. Like you can bend it a little bit. But. And I made the armor for this out of L200 foam. And it just snaps on. And it's really nice and light. Um, and I didn't really have any trouble with anything sliding down. I just used like a, used to, like a tape to hold this up, so it was easy just to stick on there, um, and it didn't like come off. Okay, so working with foam. Um, when you're adapting uh, patterns for foam, uh, you have to keep in mind the thickness of the foam. So if your foam is like about half an inch thick, then you're going to need to add 15% in the direction that the foam will be curved. Uh, for example, like if you have like You'll have to like, if it curves this way, you want to make it longer this way by 15%. Um, if you're using a like, quarter inch, uh, you don't have to add quite as much. Um, and if you're using this plain old, like, you know, craft foam for like detailing or whatever, you can pretty much just make it like the same size as your paper template. Um, I like using uh, cardstock or poster board to uh, draft patterns because it's uh, thicker and so it'll be a little bit more resistance and like kind of replicate how the foam will bend. Uh, whereas if you just use like regular printer paper, that will work. But if you're trying to do mock-ups, it's, it's a little flimsy. Um, when you're actually uh, cutting the foam, uh, the razor blade, it will get you a really smooth edge. Um, so that's really useful, but it's kind of hard to do with curves, especially for uh, Evo foam. Uh, so for example, when I use Evo foam, I have to use like a, like a, sort of like a jigsaw um, or a scroll saw. Um, but that will leave like rough edges. Um, and so you can uh, like use the Dremel here for Evo foam to sand those rough edges down from if you're using a saw. Um, you can also do all kinds of really crazy details with the Dremel tool. Like really get a Dremel, it's amazing. It's a totally worthwhile investment. Um, you can also use like the cutting bit on it. Like it's like just like a circle essentially, just a thin like circle. And you can just like go in a line to get some really nice detail lines in your armor. Um, and you can do raised details with craft foam. It adheres really well, like with glue, and uh, it's pretty much the same thing as even foam. It's just really uh, thin. Um, and I like for uh, working with foam. Super glue is, in my opinion, the best for gluing like two things on top of each other. But if you're like gluing two edges like side by side, hot glue works really well. And I know hot glue gets a really bad rap because you know it's it's hot glue and everyone says, oh, don't use hot glue. But um, the thing with foam is that when you use hot glue, heat actually like melts it, so it kind of like bonds together like physically. So you get a really strong bond in hot glue. Uh, you can also use a uh, barge, um, which is a little harder to get. Uh, you have to like order that. Um, it takes a little while to dry, but personally, like I've never had any problems with super glue or hot glue. Like I haven't had anything fall apart on me. So I would highly recommend using them. So when you're actually, once you have your patterns cut out, um, then you have to actually shape your foam. So for example, if you're making like a bicep piece and you want to wrap all the way around, like obviously like a flat piece isn't just going to do that. 
So what you have to do is uh, take your Eva foam, your L200, once it's all patterned out, and you take a heat gun, which is kind of like a hair dryer, but it gets a lot hotter. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People, I've heard of people actually using hair dryers for this before, though. So if you're like really like... like I've crunch. burned stuff with heat guns. Oh yeah. No, yeah. It gets if really you hot. aren't paying attention, you melt stuff. Oh, no! Sometimes I like burn myself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But you, you can also, you didn't hear this from me, and don't try this at home, but if you're like, you can't find your heat gun, you can use your stove, and you can just kind of hold it like above, but don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, but anyway, so what you do is you take also, your heat gun. Just like make fire? I've like done that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't, don't do what I do. Yeah, if you're really desperate, you can do that. But I, when I had to do like a very large piece, I did actually use my oven. I just made sure to have like all of my windows open. Um, that is one thing. When you're using like heat on foam, you need to have uh, your windows open. You need to have like a lot of ventilation. Um, I work a lot with uh, Steve Wang, who made like the Predator suits, um, uh, Hellboy costumes. So he's like a really you know prominent costume maker in Hollywood. And I do like a film series with him. And him and his team were telling me like they work a lot with L two hundred. And you know they do a lot of heat shaping for that, and uh, it, it's actually really bad for your for your brain. It damages your nervous system, and so like now because they've done it so long, even though they've gotten like proper ventilation, like whenever they do it, like their eye starts like twitching because like their nervous system is so bugged <laughs> out from it. Um, another good thing to use is if you're just shaping it, work with a like, work with your clothing iron just on a seat. Oh, and it actually shapes it really nicely. Really, I've been trying that. Yeah, that would be really good for like flat. Oh yeah. So what you do when you, you heat shape your foam is you take your piece and then you heat it up however you want to do it. Use the heat gun. Use the heat gun. Trust mm -hmm. me on this. <laughs> you want to make sure you do it evenly. So you want to like you know thoroughly like um, coat your piece with like heat, and you do it several times until it's uh, malleable. You don't want to burn it. Um, because you can't actually burn the foam. It'll look kind of weird. Um, so once you get it hot enough, you'll feel that it's like really easy to bend and move. So you just want to bend it with um, how whatever shape you want. You can also like wrap it like around, for example, like a bottle if you're doing like a small like wrist piece or something. Wrap it around different things to help you hold that shape and make it really nice and smooth. Uh, my friend actually uses it to uh, like to make like food plates. He uses his knee for it, which like. I don't know how he does that. I prefer like, like actual objects, but um, I prefer myself. Um, so once you like hold it to like a shape that you want, you just hold it until it cools down. Do you want to ask? Yeah, I just want to add maybe um, what I do is uh, a nail tube, and I just curl it up and put my pieces down the nail tube. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Tube, and it just breaks up this little spot. Yeah. 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 Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a good idea too. So basically, like. You know, the, the whole thing is just sort of hold it in place somehow. So you can also, like, you know, tape it to something if you want to. Um, you may have to do this, like, go ahead. I was going to say, we, we did a breastplate earlier. Uh, we used uh, heat guns and pressing against the foam to make a breastplate for her. Um, after it cooled down, it started to lose its shape. It was L200, like, Michael's craft foam. Is there a way to make that more rigid? They don't sell L200 at Michael's. Oh, that not it? I think, like, craft foam, it's like a form of Eva foam, sort of, but it's very thin. You're not going to be able to do it with something okay. so thin because it's just, it, it won't hold the shape so well because it's just, it, it's foam. And so if you do like a breastplate, you're going to have to get probably like at least quarter inch um, or like half inch, although half inch is kind of hard to do um, curves around. Uh, Evil Effects actually has a pretty good tutorial on how to do like a breastplate. Okay. Um, you basically take two like half dome shapes um, and you glue it to like, let's say like plexiglass or acrylic mm -hmm. or something. And then you make like another piece of acrylic like that like mm -hmm. is kind of like a W shape that fits those. Okay. And then you heat up your Eva foam in the oven. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. And then you, you you put it on there on like on top of the domes, and then you take your uh, your plexiglass mm -hmm. thing and you push it down, and it will give you that boob shape. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did that for my shepherd, but I'm a little more busty, so it kind of like pushed. It didn't look right because it was like pushed out for me. Um, so I actually had to do, uh, like, I actually sculpted and casted mine, um, but that is one way to do it if you don't need it to, like, it just depends on how it fits, like, you can bind yourself down and forget to fit well. Cool. Um, 
Anyway, so like once you hold it in shape uh, and you let it cool down, it should hold its shape pretty well. You may need to do it like a couple times if it's not quite holding as much as you want. Um, and then once you're done with that, um, you're basically ready to uh, start prepping it for, for painting. So what you want to do is you want to get plastic dip spray. Um, I buy mine at Lowe's, um, but you can also buy it online if you're having trouble finding it. Um, it comes in black and white, uh, it's e and that's easy to find. You can also find like different colors like red or blue or yellow, um, but for those who may have to go online. They also have clear, which is kind of cool. Um, so I do usually like anywhere between two to six coats of uh, plastic dip on the foam. It just depends on how smooth you want it to be and how smooth you need it to be. I do more Neva foam because um, it's usually some rougher areas. Um, and once you do like all those coats, it's going to basically rubberize it. So um, it, it's kind of like you guys have heard of like the, the method of you know putting like Elmer's glue and water onto craft foam. Yeah, you guys are all familiar with that. This is like that except for it doesn't make it hard, but it, it will coat it so you, your pump, your paint won't uh, sink in. So it makes it look like it's like rubber or you cast it or something. So it makes it look really nice. Um, oh, use different thicknesses. By that I'm just talking about like, for example, for my Commander Shepherd armor, I had like a half inch base piece, and then I uh, used a quarter inch uh, detail piece on top of that, and then I would have like a, an eighth inch detail piece on top of that. So if you layer it like that and you use different thicknesses, it'll make it look more realistic, because if you all use like just like half inch everywhere, it's going to look like really weird and like kind of bulky. But you can see that here, like this is the half inch, this is the quarter inch, and then this is the eighth inch, and then like same thing up here. Um, and it makes it just look like there's like, a lot of detail there, but it's actually like super easy to do. But this is like my armor once it's been uh, painted, but as you can see, like it doesn't really look like foam to get the, the plastic on there. Um, and that's all, the, all those steps are for even foam element health. So now I'm going to talk about sculpting and casting. Um, sculpting and casting is, um, it's very expensive, um, but it will get you exactly what you want, and you'll get exactly what you put into it. Um, so for example, if you're doing something very organic, or something like really complex shapes that folks can't do, um, like for example, like something really round, um, that's what sculpting and casting comes uh, in handy for. So when you get started sculpting, you're going to need clay. I personally like monster clay. Um, it's what Steve Wayne uses. Uh, he actually introduced it to me. It's like this, uh, it's like, it's oil clay, but mixed with wax. So it, if you heat it up, it gets like really runny, kind of like milk chocolate. Um, but then when it cools down, it gets really firm, so you can do a lot of detail work into it. And it's really easy to work with. Um, but there are other clays out there, like Chavant and, um, uh, Sculpting, this is, sculpting is not for uh, sculpting and casting, though. It's, uh, that's more if you want to sculpt something that's your final product. Uh, whereas uh, sculpt, uh, monster clay is like, it's basically if it's a project that you want to work on like and have it look perfect and put like, a lot of details into it, um, it won't warp on you, like, because obviously you don't have to heat it up or anything uh, for like your final, your final, pro final product. Um, and you can keep working on it for as long as you want. You can work on a project for months and it won't go dry out. Um, and then you want tools, sculpting tools. I love these rubber tools. Um, I get mine at like Michael's. They have like a little Sculpey brand pack. And you can get like a cheap pack of sculpting tools like this. Um, I love these things. These are called like kidney scrapers. Um, the one with the serrated edge is good for wrapping up your clay, which um, is handy if you want to get like a smooth surface because you wrap it up first before you smooth it out. And then this one, um, I like heating up my clay and then like, taking the spot edge along it just to give it like a really nice kind of like plastic look. Um, but there's all kinds of different tools you can use to like cut in lines and stuff into your clay. Um, these will give you like softer lines. Um, and you'll need a heat gun again. You can't use your oven for this. Don't worry. <laughs> you put your clay in your oven, you're just going to have like a mess. <laughs> don't do it. Um, so here's some examples of the sculpts I've done. This is in the molding phase, but you can see the sculpt here. This is for writing the Metal Gear Solid 4, which is sadly not the finish. But um, if you like a lot of lines, this is green clay. And then this is monster clay. So this is like a more, like I guess, a less detailed piece. This is actually my thumb chip, uh breastplate. Um, 
So once you, you have your sculpt, then it's next for your next phase, which is molding. And um, molding is basically once you have your positive, for example, like let's say you've got my water bottle here and I want to mold my uh, water bottle. Um, basically, it's going to be what, what you put around it, and then when you pull your water bottle out, you have like basically the, a perfect copy inside of this mold, and you have to cast that. That's the next step. So uh, for molding, there's some general rules. If your final cast is going to be hard, for example, um, resin, just like a plastic, um, you need like a soft um, interior. So silicone usually is the way to go with that. You can also use like next bit. Silicone is really the way to go. But if your final cast is soft, um, you can use like a hard or a soft interior. Um, and so again, silicone, or you can use gel coat and fiber. Um, the interior is, you know, it picks up all the detail, like there's an interior mold and then there's like the, the shell that goes around that. So the interior mold picks up all of the detail that's in your piece. Um, and then the exterior shell that goes around it helps it hold its shape. Um, and so basically, if you have like a rubber mold, um, it's going to be kind of floppy, right? So if, if you have like a water bottle cast, it's going to be kind of like, you know, falling in on itself, but you don't want that. And so the exterior part of the mold, the shell, will actually like hold it into place. So it doesn't have any of the detail, it just keeps its shape for when you cast. Um, uh, silicone, there's, so there's two types of like interior molds you can use. Silicone, which is, it's very expensive, um, but it, it, it works really well, works like a dream. Um, it's a two-part mix, so it's usually one-to-one. -one. So like check your instructions, because it varies, but usually it's one-to-one. -one. Um, and you mix it up. Um, it's resistant to tears, um, and uh, you'll have like a plastic paste part of glass shell, which I'll get to. That's like the hard piece that holds the shape. Um, and uh, I like silicone a lot for molding because, you know, it's it's really hard to mess up, um, and it's it's just really easy to use. There's also a gel coat, um, and you can get that easier, and it's cheaper, um, but. Uh, it's more fragile, so like when you're demolding, it's really easy to, to break pieces off, which is you know absolutely devastating after you spent like months working on this cold. Um, and uh, this requires a fiberglass shell, um, but it is cheaper. So if you're on a budget, gel coat is the way to go. And then the shells, um, there's the plastic case, which is basically like okay, it looks just like mashed potatoes. You guys don't even understand. It's like you take like mashed potatoes. And then like the, and you mix it together, and then the part two looks just like gravy. So when you're mixing it, it's like <laughs> I am so hungry right now. <laughs> so, but it, it's a, um, it, it's kind of finicky, uh, like I mentioned here. Um, so like sometimes it won't mold quite right. So if you get plastic paste, get plastic paste two. I have had zero problems with plastic paste two. The plastic paste one is, is weird, and it won't always like completely cure. It will get kind of sticky. Um, and you can get this online. I think I have links at the end, um, but smooth on is where you can buy all of this. It's pretty simple to remember, just smooth on. Um, and then for the fiberglass shells, um, that's basically like a resin and then like, you know, fiberglass mat. So basically you will um, coat your, uh, let's say your gel coat or your silicone that you've put on uh, with like the, the resin and then you'll put on the fiberglass and then coat that again with resin. And you do that like for a couple layers. Um, it is messy, um, and I would highly recommend you getting um, like just some cheap coveralls or something while you're working on stuff. Otherwise, it'll like get in your clothes and be super itchy. Um, you also want to wear eye protection because it's little tiny glass fibers, and if you get that in your eye, you're gonna have problems. Um, I just recommend breathing protection, so like a mask. Um, the the chemicals though, like silicone, glass paste. I don't think that. But um, just to add to the fiberglass thing, um, don't buy like just the regular like dust masks. If you're working with fiberglass and fiberglass resin, you need like an actual respirator. Unfortunately, they're like $45, but once you have it, you have it forever because yeah, you don't want the fumes from the resin in your body. You don't want bits of fiberglass in your body. The resin also smells terrible. Yeah, I recommend getting the respirator. It's definitely very good. And I would also recommend doing it in molding and casting, especially if you're using any kind of fiberglass or gel coat. Do it outside because it makes you know ventilation nice. Silicone's pretty benign. Like there's not really any fumes. I would like you know ventilate your house if you do it inside. 
Um, but in general, because it's molding is a really messy process, it's better to do it outside if you can, or in a garage or something. Okay, so the molding process is the first thing you need to do is you need to spray it easy release thoroughly all over your sculpt. What the easy release does is it will make your clay pop out of your mold really easy. Otherwise, you're going to be really miserable picking clay out of your mold for like a week, and that's not fun, trust me. If you are uh, working with silicone at all, at any point in time in this process, for example, if your final cast is going to be silicone, if your mold is going to be silicone, make sure your gloves are non-latex. If you use latex gloves, it will make your silicone never cure and your whole project is ruined, and you'll be very, very sad forever. So <laughs> just, just uh, make sure you get vinyl gloves or you know nitrile gloves, just something non-latex. Just make sure it's non-latex on there. Um, so once you're ready and you've got like all your proper protection on, um, and you've got the ease release on, um, you want to apply about three coats of the interior mold mix, so if it's silicone or gel coat. Um, and then once that's uh, fully, uh, coat, uh, fully cured, like a general, like, general rule for me is for my interior mold, is I want to make sure that I can't see like the clay from my skull. You want to make sure it's thick enough for that. But usually about three is enough. And then like two or three coats of the mold shell um, is usually enough for fiberglass. glass, I would go three. For plastic base, you may only need two, depending on how thick you put it on. Um, and make sure you allow it to fully cure before demolding. Usually that's 24 hours. Um, and between coats of each kind of um, uh, mold mix that you're doing before you do each coat, make sure it's at least just tacky and not wet. Like you want mostly just tacky and mostly dry. Um, but once it's fully cured, you can demold. Um, and that's basically where you pull the mold off and uh, you pull the clay out. Um, uh, yeah, well, if it's um, fiberglass, you're going to have to like kind of break it apart. Um, like, it depends. Like, if you're doing a one part mold, you don't have to. Um, you just basically will just pull the clay out or you'll pull, like, let's say if it's like using silicone with like plastic paste. Um, you'll just pull the silicone part out, like dump that out and just stick it back in there. You want to make sure you have mold keys, by the way, if you're using um, silicone with like a hard backing. Uh, the mold keys will make sure everything locks in place properly. Um, and that's basically just like a round piece of silicone. Um, but then if you're doing two part molds, um, uh, yeah, as you can see here, this is um, aluminum like shims. Uh, and you have that to separate like the two pieces, because um, obviously you know, you can't just pull, if it was one solid piece, you wouldn't be able to get it off of the mold, or off of, sorry, off of the mannequin. Um, and this is the gel coat, by the way. And once you get the fiberglass on here, it's going to be, like, more covered. But obviously it's, like, hard, and it's probably bonding to your aluminum, bonding to your mannequin. This is also a reason why ease release is important. Um, so it's kind of difficult to make it come off. So you kind of have to break. If there's any edges that, like, kind of went over, and you have to break that apart. Um, you can use like very strong, I want to say clippers, but cut thingies, not scissors, huh? Shears. Shears, right, shears. Yeah, so you want to use shears to cut that apart. So um, once you like basically shear it, um, it should come off easier. But yeah, it does sometimes require a little bit of breaking, um, which is one of the reasons why silicone is nice and silicone won't break. It'll just stretch. Um, Okay, and then once you have everything you mold, you've got your uh, mold cleaned out, um, then it's time for casting. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can cast with. Um, for prosthetics, um, so basically anything that you're going to have like on your face, or like, you know, sometimes like an alien mask, something like that. So you want to be flexible. You want to use foam latex um, or uh, silicone. Um, foam latex is, uh, it, I think it's cheaper, I can't remember. But it's, it's opaque, um, and it's light, and silicone is translucent and heavy. Uh, the problem with foam latex, though, is that you have to bake it. Um, and I would, it's, I think it, it's not safe to do in your, your regular oven. So you'd have to find somebody who actually has like an industrial oven, like sometimes plastic shops. If you have one nearby, we'll have one, and they might let you use it if you like, give them like 20 bucks or something. Um, uh, whereas silicone, you don't have to like heat it up or anything. You can also get like casting latex as well. Um, and you can get that from monstermakers.com. Um, but silicone, the advantage of silicone is that it's translucent. 
Um, for armor, um, you want to use either a resin, which is just basically toxic, <coughs> which is completely hard. It's not flexible at all. Um, but um, it works for some things. Just keep in mind it's very heavy. Um, you can also use your thing back with fiberglass, which is something that uh, I like to cast armor in. Um, and basically, your thing is kind of like silicone that's very flexible. But once you put the fiberglass in there, it makes it very strong. And the more uh, coats of fiberglass that you put in there, uh, the more rigid it will be. And the nice thing about the urethane is that like, if you drop it, it's probably not going to break. Whereas if you drop the resin, it's just going to shatter. Um, you can also do self-skinning urethane foam, which requires a two-part mold. So you've got your, like, like this is like maybe your face part of your mold. You'll need like a backing for that because it expands. Um, but it's very flexible and it's very light and it, it's already like skin and everything, so it doesn't look like foam. Um, but that's a little bit more advanced. Um, and then the casting process is you uh, coat your mold in here with each release again. It just makes everything pop out easier. It's not as necessary as like a silicone mold, but just in general, you ease release a couple coats of it. Um, you want to mix uh, and apply your uh, whatever you're casting with. Usually it's going to be like I think it's pretty much everything. It's just like two parts. So you pour like your two parts into like a bucket and you mix it up. Um, and you have to do a couple uh, cure, like couple coats of it again. Um, and you want to brush it on, like especially like your initial layer. You have to brush that on uh, to make sure that there's no bubbles in your final cast. Um, and then you can like slush it if you want, which is like, for example, if you're making like a helmet mold, so it's like kind of like a bucket. Your mold looks like a bucket. You'll just pour some in there and you'll just like kind of like do this with it for like 15 minutes until it cures and sets. Um, and if you're doing like a, a mold where you're backing with fiberglass, um, like the skin coat is very important. You need to make sure it's thick enough um, and you need to make sure that your skin coat is uh, fully, fully cured before you put any more fiberglass in there. So do your skin coat with your brush. So it's just like a, a nice coat that, you know, covers everything. And then once that's cured, you put in another coat, and while that's still wet, you put in your fiberglass. And that will give it strength. And if you don't want it to be too heavy, I would just put in like two layers of fiberglass. That's probably enough. Because um, otherwise it would be heavy and uncomfortable. Um, and yeah, once you're once you're done casting it and you demold, um, you want to uh, wash everything in warm soap and water because it easily might mess up your painting. Um, and if you're doing urethane, uh, after you're washing it, use a bulldog adhesion promoter. Otherwise, you'll have problems with the paint coming off. But I did this with casting. I did these armor pieces with casting. And then I did this with casting. Um, this was the urethane with uh, the fiberglass backing. Uh, these were just uh, straight up resin. And this, again, was uh, straight up resin. The nice thing about resin is it's really easy to paint with urethane is harder. Um, okay, so Sintra. Uh, Sintra is basically like uh, plastic sheets. Um, it's kind of like styrene, except for it's a little bit thicker. Um, so it's usually, I see it about like a quarter inch thicker, like a quarter inch thickness, but you can also get like different thicknesses. Uh, you can get it at a plastic shop. So it's not something you can buy like super easily at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, but you can probably order it online too. Um, and the nice thing is it can be heat shaped, um, like a uh, foam can be, um, but it's like very rigid once it's, it's cured, so you don't have to worry, or once, it, once it's cooled down, it's very rigid, so you don't have to worry about like, if you don't want something flexy at all on you, uh, it's just the way to go. Um, and you can cut it with an X-Acto knife, you can't use scissors, it's too thick and it's too like hard and dense. Um, Sintra is really good if, you're, if you've gotten really good with like heat shaping like the foam. Sintra is, is a great option as well for making armor because um, you can get it to be like really thin and still like really like rigid. Whereas for example, if you've got like a quarter inch thickness of foam, um, even like once you, you know, you set it with your heat and everything, it's still going to be really flexible. Or Sintra, once it's hard, it looks, it won't move at all. So it'll, and it's only a quarter inch thick and it'll like hold its shape really well. Whereas with foam, you need like a thicker, um, a thicker amount of foam to get that same rigidity. If that makes sense. However, in my opinion, it's a little bit harder to work with when it's hot. Like, I have trouble getting it like really smooth. Whereas with foam, it's really easy to get like shape it very smoothly, very evenly. Um, so Sintra requires some more practice, in my opinion. Okay, and then there's 
is vacuum forming. Um, vacuum forming is an interesting process. Um, you can build your own vacuum form machine. Um, I believe Vulcan Props has a tutorial on how to do that. Um, and what vacuum forming is, is basically you build like a shape, for example, out of wood, um, and then you uh, put it in your vacuum form machine, and uh, you put like a piece of like Sintra or a piece of styrene. You can even do this with foam, um, if you're careful. Um, and you put it in there, and like it heats the the like the Sintra up, and then it will like pull or you use it to pull the the Sintra over your form, and it will create like a perfect replica of it. Um, the, the big thing for that though is you have to have a vacuum form machine, which again you can build yourself, but you might be able to find one again in a plastic shop or somewhere, or you might have you no know, friend who has one or who's built one. Um, and sometimes like if like one person has one in like a circle of friends that's better because it's, you know, obviously that's the thing you're going to be using a lot. It's not very practical just to have around the house. Um, um, just in, you know, a lot of colleges that have stagecraft programs, oh. those, um, like Douglas College in Westminster, they have one. You might be able to sweet talk your way into that. <laughs> okay. The staff is really fun. I, I took the, the course, so. That's a good you idea. Might be able to do that. Yeah, so if you have any like college friends, be like, get me the hook, I'm scared. Don't, don't tell them I told you that. <laughs> She's the one to talk to her. <laughs> um, but some things to keep in mind with uh, vacuum forming is again, like once you have your finished piece, it's going to be really like rigid again because it's plastic. Um, but uh, the thickness of the plastic will reflect how much detail you get on uh, on your your final piece. The thicker the plastic, like the smoother it's going to be, so the less detail you're going to have, but the more rigid it will be. But if you use like a very thin styrene, which is very thin plastic, um, and you vacuum form that you'll get a lot of detail. However, it's going to be like more flimsy. So um, it's, you kind of have to find like the right, like the right bargain between like flimsiness and uh, uh, detail, so. Um, another thing you can use for making pops is epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is super useful. Um, it comes in like two buckets, and in my opinion, it smells like just like peanut butter. So. It, it's really interesting stuff, but um, you just take like, two uh, two balls the same size out of it, and you like kind of rub it together, kind of like you know mixing play-doh when you were a kid. And uh, once you've done that, like you make sure it's pretty much even. Um, it will hardly cure over 24 hours. So you've got like maybe like half an hour where it's still like really like super flexible, and it's kind of like sculpting where you can just like you know sculpt something like small and like really fast. And then it will uh, get hard, but you don't have to bake it, and it won't deform its shape. Like I know Sculpey deforms its shape when you bake it sometimes. Um, so, like it's not as you can't get as much detail as you can with the like Sculpey casting, but it's a lot quicker, it's a lot cheaper. Um, and once you have that hardened piece, it sands really easily, and you can crumble in it. So you can put in uh, details that way. It's really good, for example, if you're like making a staff and you want to have like a detailed pommel on there, but you know. Sculpting and casting is so like expensive, takes forever. This is probably the way to go for that. Um, so I really like it for detail work. It is heavy though, so you don't want to make like massive pieces out of it. It's it's really just good for like small pieces or really like like just detail that you put onto like armor or something or like a prop. Okay, painting. Um, painting is like one of my favorite parts. Um, again, when you're painting your thing. Um, Make sure you apply Bulldog Adhesion Promoter first, otherwise your paint will flake away. Um, this isn't necessary with like uh, anything else really. Um, and uh, you don't want to, when you're painting, you don't want to like be super close when you're painting or it's going to like ball up and create drops. Like if you're using the spray paint, make sure it's shaken thoroughly and you like spray it from like a, about 12 inches away and make it have like a nice mist. Um, you can layer different colors too. I did that for my uh, my shepherd armor. I started out with like a, a silver, and then I did like a transparent metallic black, like a really thin coat of it. Um, and then I did like some detail painting uh, where I basically masked it off with like a screen, like just like a screen from a window. Um, but it was like really like kind of like thick cells, I guess you would say, on the screen. Um, so it gave it a really cool texture. Um, and then I did like another coat of like black and then um, I weathered it. Got some pictures here. So this is like once it's positive. It's pretty simple. And then um, 
this is like once it looks like but I think what it looks like once it's finished. So again, I started out with the silver, and then I added some transparent black, and then I added like I screened, like I masked it off with the screen to create this texture, and then I weathered it. And when you're weathering, you just want to put like black in like crevices and corners, and you want to do highlights, um, usually like a silver, um, on any place that you think would get like nicked up or like on high points. Um, generally, high points is, is the main place to put it on. And you just want to make it look like really beat up if that's what you're going for, or you can make it look really clean. Question. For weathering, how what would you use to properly weather it? Like sharpie or what's probably you, not you sharpie? Can, I mean, you could use sharpie if you're like in a hurry. Um, <laughs> I, I did that once. I had like a prop and like I was making it in my hotel room and I had like a sharpie and I'm like screw it. It actually turned out pretty good for photos. I run. But um, what you want to use is, in my opinion, acrylic paint. Um, my technique for that is um, I uh, basically will take acrylic paint and I'll just kind of like. Just put a bunch on there, especially like in corners and stuff. And then I will take a, a, a paper towel and I'll just like wipe it off. And you want to wipe it in one direction. And then if you want, if something is like still has too much of the paint, you want it to be more shiny, you just wet your, your paper towel and you go over that again and it'll just pull off anything extra. Um, and it holds on pretty well and it looks uh, grungy. When I do weathering, like for like the, the dark parts, I don't use like straight up black. I use like a mix of like a dark brown and like a dark bluish green because you don't, if it's just straight up black it's going to look kind of fake whereas if it has like a little bit of color to it it looks more like natural um, but you can also do like rust and stuff so there's a lot of different like options for painting that's like the basics of color okay now for advanced sewing techniques um, if you're making like a crazy bodysuit like for example it has like a lot of different like paneling a lot of different designs in there or like an applique or something the easy way to do it is to take whatever fabric that you're using, something that's the same that you stretch to it, um, and you make like a, basically like a mock-up. Um, just a very simple bodysuit or leotard, whatever. And then you, you can stand in the mirror and uh, take a Sharpie, or you can have a friend do it to you if you're not feeling really confident. Um, and you want to just draw on whatever design you want, and you only have to do it like on half of it. And then you just like draw a line up the center line on the front and the back, um, and you cut it apart and then you cut it along those lines and you have like an instant pattern and it will fit you perfectly and you can do some really crazy like designs like that. Um, for example, like I did, it, did this this way, like I don't have a picture of the mock-up that I did it initially. These are some of the patterns I made from it and this is the final suit. As you can see, it's got like a lot of detailing, like it's got these seams here and then it's got like uh, inset panels of like mesh. I actually can't see. We can't see it. It's all washed out. It's all oh fun. no! <laughs> Okay, just trust me. I can trust <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, just imagine that there's all kinds of cool panels you can't see because it's on the Just go on your Facebook page. Yeah, it's on my Facebook page, but it's all like, it's all black on black, but I like doing different textures for my suits, so. Anyway, so just imagine that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so useful places um, for this sort of uh, materials. The rbf.com, people use like sculpting and casting, they use foam, all kinds of different techniques. They are so great, I love the Amazing, RPF. oh my gosh. And the people there are like so super nice. Um, and basically what people will do is, is like they'll be building like Iron Man or Commander Shepard or like you know whatever you want. And uh, they'll be building it and they'll like basically be documenting their process. They'll say exactly what materials they're using. Um, what techniques they're using, if something goes wrong, they'll say, hey, this didn't work out. And then um, you know, people will jump in there and say, hey, try this. So it's, it's great just to look through, and also if you're trying to start a project, um, you can ask for help on there, or just like your build log on there, and people get interested. So if you do run into a stumbling block, people will suggest things to you. Mulan.com also has a bunch of uh, molding and casting tutorials, and they sell the products. So you can be looking at a product and you're like, wow, this looks really cool, but I have no idea how to use it. You just scroll down and they'll have like video tutorials and it, it just shows you. So it's uh, really handy. Um, so these are the two best places to go. Oh, and that's it. So.
Um, but I can't see if you have to step up and have any suggestions for that. Um, you know, our other guest here, Kathy, she yeah. works a lot with leather. She'd be more qualified to answer that. Like, my answer to that would be to basically take, like, a piece of, like, foam or styrene or something and, like, wrap the leather around that. But she may have, like, she may know of, like, a way to, like, stiffen it. But I don't really work with leather all that much. So. <clears throat> what would you recommend as sort of the cheapest beginner material to make a dome-ish shape? A dome? Um, what kind, what are you shooting for? Like, like a shoulder pad, but it's very rounded, so it's harder to bend with those bendable edges. Oh, I see. What's, what's the best material you would recommend for a beginner It's cheap, um, easily obtainable for a dome shape? For a dome shape, you could actually use Eva foam or L200 foam, and you just, what you want to do is you want to buy like, like, you know how those, they have like little kid popper toys? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. They have like a little like dome and you see stuff popping inside of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could buy something like that. Yeah. You also have like gardening, like some like online gardening things. Like they have something called like fascinators or something that's shaped like a dome. You buy something like that and then use that as your base and you pull, um, you pull your foam over it um, and it'll make it like really like round. It'll, you can get like a perfect dome. Um, you want to set that on top of like a small platform though, so it'll pull down like a little bit farther. Yeah, and that would be like really cheap, really light. Um, uh, for that, you probably need to get the foam really hot though, so you'll have to use your oven. So just like <laughs> make sure you like ventilate everything, and like I would recommend like leaving your oven like after your oven open, like just for several hours afterwards, just to make sure everything's out of there before you cook. Do you have oven foam acrylic? Yeah, actually, um, I did that for uh, for the breast piece on this. That was a long time ago, but can you use my oven for that? You can heat warm a clear acrylic in the oven, although the like the point between which it's formable and the point at which it collapses on itself is very very narrow, and I was making like a translucent. Visor and I went through I think five attempts before having one that was mostly okay. Yeah, like, acrylic is kind of hard to form, unfortunately. Yeah, when I do acrylic, I have my husband help me because like I'm afraid I'm just gonna like melt it everywhere and it's like oh. I, I like foam. I'm a foam person. <laughs> um, we're gonna be working on a costume um, soon. <laughs> All three of us <laughs> are doing a group costume, um, and they require wings, like big, long, huge wings. Um, and we want to be able to fold them down because, you know, it's hard to keep taking them on and off when you go to panels, and you don't want to hit people in the face or anything. So we want to, um, we're trying to figure out how to hinge them so that they can fold um, more, like to look a little more natural and stuff. Do you have any ideas on that? Honestly, like, I think that you could either, like, if you want your wings to look really good, you're probably going to have to make them static um, because it's going to be really hard to replicate the actual shape of a wing mm -hmm. um, prop wise and actually have it fold down. Um, like, the method that's usually best for making wings in general is to make like an armature out of chicken wire and then cover that with like, basically like a like paper and then glue the, the, the feathers to that. Um, and that's pretty much just the costly standard way of doing it. Um, as far as like making it hinge down, and making it look good, I don't know how possible that is. Like maybe if you like suspended it on fabric or something. Yeah. Um, did you go to the cosplay contest the other day? Um, no, I don't think we were. At Those were articulated wings. Those are really complex to make. But if she wants some questions on that, she can always yeah. ask the cosplayer. There was a person named Gabriel who I actually have on Facebook. <laughs> she made wings that open and close that you were talking about, and if you asked her some questions, she'd probably be able to answer them for you. Okay. Yeah, oh, she, she was a cat. She, she was a cat. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just it's harder to get like a more natural shape with yeah. that. Yeah. So like it depends on what you're going for. Like yeah. if you're like I would suggest maybe doing like collapsible ones. If you have like the time and money, like collapsable ones for con and then do like really nice ones for like a photo shoot. That way you can have like the best of both. Oh yeah. yeah um, what type of paint do you use, like on the foam and stuff? Just like whatever you're comfortable with, or um, when I well, once I plastic up everything, you can basically use whatever paint you want. I like using spray paint just because it's easy to coat. 
and you can do a lot of different effects with that. Um, but you can also use acrylic paint if you really want to, but it won't go on as smoothly. Acrylic okay. is better for weathering. It just use like any kind of spray paint, like it doesn't like have bad reactions. So. Okay. So I was actually in the cosplay contest yesterday. I don't know if you were one of the judges. I was Miss Marvel. Okay. And so does Miss Marvel. Yeah. yeah, I sometimes have trouble recognizing people in this I had the, the fox mask. Oh, okay, cool. Which was version two of that mask. Um, version one was paper mache, version two was ultralight sculpty and paper clay and trying to figure out like the best way to get the whole shape and also have it be lighted up. Because the second version actually turned out too heavy to like actually wear as a mask. Oh really? Yeah, that's what I was carrying it the whole time oh. because when I put it on it's like, oh, the eye holes sink down too low to actually see out of I think that was all the paper play. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna think probably what you would want to do then is uh, sculpt it and cast it. And have your final cast be um, the two part urethane foam. Um, it'll hold its shape well and it'll be self skin so you don't have to worry about like it looking like foam. Um, but it'll also be really light again because it's foam. Um, you can find out if you go to Smooth On's website, they have like a tutorial on exactly how to do that. But basically, you're going to make like you're going to make your sculpt and then you'll do like a standard one part mold and then you'll put fill in the clay for whatever thickness you want, make a mold of that, and then you have to put that together and like. You the cat, like you put stuff in there, and then uh, like it'll fill up, it'll pop out of the holes. I don't know how to explain it, but it'll as the foam expands, it'll come out of like any seams that you have. And um, once you pull it apart, you have your mask. You just have to trim it up. But that would be really light. Um, it will be expensive, so it just depends on like you know how much. You probably get like a trial kit though, and that would probably be not then probably I think thirty dollars, which is less than. Second one cost me because that was two packages of like ultralight sculpty and a whole package of paper clay. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the way to go. Maybe. Anyone else? Yeah. The uh, top that you used for the uh, shepherd uh, horn, what did you make that out of? This one, I actually did not make. This was made with a laser cutter, which I do not have. And it's like, you know what? I can make this and have it look crappy, or I can have a friend who, has, who works at a place that like has a laser cutter. I can have him do it. So I just commissioned my friend for it. But um, you know how he made like it or? Uh, yeah, like the actual like forming of it, you can do like with just heat. But to get it cut really nice like that, you have to have a laser cutter, and that's how like all the details are put in it. Okay, what, what was it made out of? Um, this is just acrylic. Yeah, or orange acrylic. Yeah, if you're like if you're just doing something that's not like that doesn't have to be precisely cut like this, um, you can do it at home. But this has you can't really see it here, but it has all kinds of like little detail lines actually like etched into it, and that was you have to have a laser cutter for that, unfortunately. Um, but for, so I would recommend like commissioning that because the laser cutter is like seven hundred to thousand dollars or something. If you live in Vancouver, um, if you remember. So you be like, well, yeah, that's part of it is because it's costing so much money that you have to go through life training. But Funny the people stuff. there might be willing to do it on commission too. That's true. So you know, generally, like laser cutter, like unless you like are going to like invest in one, you might want to look into commissioning it. Um, yeah. Funny. A lot of cities have hack spaces these days, and a lot of them have laser cutters. Yeah. <laughs> or join a hack space. Um, what's your Facebook again? Oh, my Facebook. Um, Facebook is um, Precious Cosplay. Um, it's really easy to find. Just type in Precious Cosplay. Um, I think I've got it up. Do I have it up right now? That's not it. Prepare to show you. It's the second tab you've got on there. I'm pretty sure. Oh, is it the second window? Yeah. Or if you're messaging me. No, I opened that up and it was actually just like my flight information. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I'm sure you guys really care about. But yeah, so this is my my cosplay page. So Precious Cosplay, easy to find. 
It's the first one, Be Search Precious Cause by All the Way Out. I just did it. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can like follow me in here. I try to be like responsive to questions as much as possible. Sometimes like I've got a lot of messages on there, sometimes I just kind of miss stuff or I'll read it and then I'll, while I'm in bed and then I'll forget about it the next day. But I will try to answer your questions if you have any. Um, you can just message me. I think, is there a panel over? Do we have like two minutes for one question? Um, we should get you going since we thought we need to get you to a couple of shoots. Oh, that's true. Okay, yeah. Because I fly out in like two hours, so. I should probably go.